Welcome. This is a review on the original Spider-Man run, issue number eight. It it has uh, two stories in it, and it goes here: Spider-Man versus the Living Brain, and Peter Parker fights with Flash Thompson. And don't miss out extra added attraction: Spider-Man tackles the Human Torch. And a special tribute to Teenagers issue. Nice Spider-Man shot here, really well done. And the Human Torch is in the background. Getting into it, I mentioned other than issue 2, on the original creator's run, all the Spidey issues since then were full issue stories. Not like two s smaller stories into one, but this was the exception and this was two stories in it. There really is no main villain here. This one is called Spider-Man vs. Living Brain and is fighting a robot. It's funny because no idea goes to waste. In the Superior Spider-Man in the comics now, the Living Brain is has been brought back in a story so you know despite uh, Steve Ditko and his genius and he really is one of the greats for a variety of reasons too much to go into here but overall he never really designed robots I thought that really looked intimidating or fantastic you know Jack Kirby was really more like the robot type of guy and Steve Ditko it really seems like a 60s type of robot and I guess it's not a strong point, and that's just my opinion on it. And I'm just a huge fan, but you know, I gotta be honest in my views. But that's just taking nothing away from the guy, because you know, that's still a master at the craft. You know, one of the reasons I like Spidey so much is because of his work. It's mostly Steve who created most of the Spidey aspects, and Stan Lee gets way too much credit. But you know, that's a whole other discussion. But anyway, Spider-Man vs. The Living Brain, it's basically a throwaway issue. But there is some aspect here that is undeniable. Flash knocks off his glasses and they break. And guess what? It was this issue, issue 8, that Spidey never wore glasses again. At least majorly in a story. It, I guess, I don't know what happened, whether Steve realize you know if he's wearing a mask it hides his identity so he doesn't need glasses or maybe it's like too much like Clark Kent that Clark Kent has glasses whatever the reason between him or Stan Lee whatever it was that went on no more glasses anymore and probably you know Spider-Man he heals a little quicker than ordinary it's not like a Wolverine healing factor but probably just healed his eyes. It never outright said or explained. The only thing is, he just said he didn't need it anymore. Hmm. He don't need those specs anyway. But it was never really explained why. Other than that just assumption. Anyway, the living brain here figures it's a supercomputer and it could answer anything. So the, the students ask, you know, what's Spider-Man's identity? And Peter Parker is dreading it because what if the computer is right and he can analyze the data? A rare appearance that Peter Parker gets upset at Flash and they want to settle it in the ring. That's just an interpretation by the artist here. So they get into a boxing ring. And he really whacks him, which is really good. He didn't expect to use that much strength. Everyone is surprised. But I think it was some weird accident and it wasn't... It was just like some weird sucker punch that didn't happen. So, they're boxing in the ring. He really doesn't want to hit him. And he was looking away. And sure enough, he hit him. And uh, everyone thinks it was like a sucker punch and things like that. They hear about the living brain being on the loose. Because some robbers wanted to steal him for their own ideas so he's basically misguided this robot and they're battling it out so nice paneling I like that the door is closed and then he goes there now scatter hurry super strength just ripping open the door so easy as you continue battling the brain
you know, this is, really isn't a super villain. It's more like a, a light-hearted robot villain. The robot brain captures him here, They're swinging around. <laughs> Flesh wakes up, and the crooks stumble upon him. Hmm. And so he caught the crooks, and everyone thinks he's the one who caught him. And actually, Peter Parker leaves happy, because in this 17-page story, he got the clobber flash. So that's a little payback. And he says he'll just lose the paper and say about Spider-Man's identity, that the robot was wrong. And so he's covered up, his identity is safe. And Spider-Man tackles the Human Torch. This was by Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, inked by Steve Ditko, and lettered by S. Rosen. It was a six-page story and just a backup. So many other reviews, this just continues the relationship between Peter Parker, uh, Spider-Man, I should say, and the Human Torch. Basically, the Torch is throwing a party and Spider-Man is dropping by just to hassle uh, the Human Torch. Nothing more, just to hassle him. Human Torch fights it out. I like the idea of those web type of parachutes. And sandbags. They fight, but they really don't mean to harm each other. And then the everyone's watching. The Fantastic Four are there. The thing tries to get in on the action. I like that type of a web type of cape design. And uh, the Invisible Woman, or the Invisible Girl, then breaks it up. She goes. You're entirely too clever and adorable to be fighting with us. I'll bet you're as handsome as you are, muscular under that mask. I'll cut it out, Sue. I just ate. And then uh, they said, why don't you two bury the hatchet? He goes, I'd like to bury it all right, and I'll give you three guesses where. Well, well, look who just made a funny. Mm -hmm. And he says, go back to your dull party, Torch. I wouldn't join you on a bet. It's a good thing you got Mr. Fantastic and the thing to wet nurse you. And as for your sister Sue, she's the only good thing about the overrated Fantastic Four. And look, he left a heart on the floor of his webbing. Watch what she says. For goodness sake, look what he left. He spun it out of his web fluid for me. I like this issue. It was more of a lighthearted take. Issue uh, 8 was not a serious issue in terms of the villain and in terms of the backup story. It was kind of a more of a offbeat tale continues the Fantastic Four relationship and it continues Spider-Man developing his world and issue 9 which should be a future review first appearance of Electro